Hey, how you doing? Hey, do you like metal? I like metal. Let's talk about metal. Let's do it in a video on YouTube and have fun about it. My name is Brain Smasher. Thanks for joining me. I've got four albums to tell you about. Well, actually kind of five because we're going to be listening to one, but I'm not going to review it. I'm going to review four that we're not listening to. Makes sense, right? Turn it up a little bit. We're listening to the fucking killer Return to Mystery by Equinox. Short run of it is, the skinny of it is. Sounds like death and mayhem made a baby. And this is Equinox. This is uh, pre-Druid Lord. Floridian death metal of the highest order. This shit is great. Check it out. Link down below. So, four albums that I've recently put back in my collection. Here we go. First one is Book of Kings by Mournful Congregation. This is out on 20 bucks spin, and this was a gift by my good buddy, Marty Worm. Fellow YouTuber and fellow awesome person. Uh, I love, love the June Frost. I love Monad of Creation, previous albums by Mournful Congregation. But for some reason, I just kind of quit buying their albums. Uh, just never really got around to picking this one up. So, for some reason or another, Marty decided to give me a copy of it. And holy shit, I love this album, and I don't know why I stopped picking up their records. This is one of the more, if not the most interesting and fascinating and uh, doing the genre justice, funeral death, funeral doom metal bands that there are. I think Funeral Doom is an awesome concept and a lot of bands do it pretty well and a couple of bands do it really fucking well. And those bands that do it really well put an extra kind of different spin on it. Bands like Nort uh, take the tenets of the genre, but they add a little bit of personality to it or they take it a little step further and kind of make it more blackened, like Nort, um, and a lot more desolate and just grim. Whereas a band like Mournful Congregation, uh, to me, they add a whole lot more musicality to it and melody without it becoming, without it losing any of its uh, tired and lonely pace. Uh, and I just, I think it's a fascinating style that they do between you know, something so slow and so desolate and bleak, but adding just the perfect amount of musicality and melody and atmosphere to the vocals and the guitars and the drums and the keyboards. It just all adds together to this just wonderful sound. Um, so, you know, I'm back on the board with Monofold Congregation. Um, I don't know what, you know, caused me to stop picking up their records, but this is so goddamn just tastefully done. Um, this is just one of the best examples of how amazing metal can be. Mournful Congregation, Book of Kings. Um, they just put out an EP, and I'm, I need to pick that up. I wonder, I'm not sure if they have a full length coming out soon or not. Let me know down below. Um, I, need to get, I need to get right with Mournful Congregation, that's for sure. These guys are in a ton of other bands, too, that are super good. Cauldron Black Ram is super awesome. Um, there's even links to like Stargazer and Portal, <clears throat> tons of Australian shit. Those Australian bands are all just completely incestuous, but this one just brings so much notoriety to the region and the genre that they belong in. Um, so also, in my last video I talked about how I went up to uh, Earwax Records in Madison and went nuts on Record Store Day. This was one of the new releases that I picked up, Melakesh with the Epigenesis. Nuclear Blast put this out all the way back in 2010, so it took me eight fucking years to pick this one up. Um, this is great, super great stuff. Uh, Mesopotamian, I don't know, it, it's kind of, uh, this band is really, really hard to pigeonhole, um, so it's not really worth it to pigeonhole them, but to describe them, I would say they kind of fall somewhere between a thrashy, sort of a thrashy band or a black metal band, kind of a thrashy sort of black metal, but that is not at all what defines them. What defines their style is how they play in this sort of um, Middle Eastern sort of style. 
They use the th they use you know elements of black metal and elements of thrash metal, and they play furiously. But the notes and the melodies that they conjure uh, sound so much like Middle Eastern kind of music. I'm not sure if it's the kind of tuning that they use, um, but there's just such a unique flair to their style that I just fucking love it. I can't get enough of this band's stuff. Um, in fact, I need to buy more of their albums, but I'm getting pretty close to having all of their records. And the Epigenesis is super good. This was, came out of Nuclear Blast, so I'm sure you can pick out a copy of this um, for fairly cheap, but link down below for sure for you to check it out. It is really, really good stuff. Uh, let's see, next. So from that Spart Records order that I made, I also wound up picking up this initiated World on Fire. Not the kind of thing I ordinarily buy. Uh, and I tried my damnedest to not like this, I swear. My buddy Pat from Grout and Sealer Salem uh, played this in a video several months ago and I was addicted. I was hooked. The bands that I'm going to say that this album sounds like are bands that I don't even like. It's like street punk, sort of Danzig, maybe somewhere between Misfits and Danzig, riff-wise, um, and vocal-wise, I guess, a little bit. I, I tend to think, I'm probably going to step on a lot of toes here, but I think Danzig sounds like an idiot version of Elvis or fucking Jim Morrison or something. I just have never been able to wrap my mind around the Misfits or Danzig. I want to like Danzig. The riffs are great. It's super cool. Late 80s, early 90s kind of um, kind of proto thrash or whatever it is. It, it's pretty good, but there's this singer on it, and I just cannot listen to that guy. Um, I like the idea of Danzig even, but just listening to him is not something that makes my brain happy. This, however, is super good. Catchy as all hell. It's one of the kinds of things you just want to roll down the windows in your car, crank it up, drive kind of fast, and be careful, but pretty fast down the road. You know, pull into your garage, act like nothing happened. It's not a big deal, but this album was playing the whole time. So Spark Records put this out, and it's really killer. If the first song, Celebrate the Dead, doesn't have you absolutely hooked in buying this album, then just give up. It's not your kind of thing. Um, I don't listen to really anything else like this, so it's kind of hard to, you know, for me to say what it's like other than really good, really fun, really catchy, and uh, just kind of dumb, ham-fisted, fun, street punk metal. And finally, another album that I kind of ignored, I guess. There were a lot of people hyping this album uh, when it came out two or three years ago on Profound Lore. And I listened to it and I wasn't really interested in it, but it's one of those things that I do quite often where it seems like the hype just completely outmeasures what they're actually hyping about. So I wait for the hype to die off and I sneak in the back door and I give it a little bit of a listen and I decide what I'm thinking of it. Sometimes I do it a little bit too early and I talk myself out of liking whatever it is, but uh, I don't know, enough of you guys were hyping this band Shithilist. I don't know how, if anyone can properly pronounce that, but it's a Lovecraftian word, so you're not supposed to be able to pronounce Lovecraftian words, um, or French words for that matter, so I'm going to try. Le Dernier Crepuscule is the name of the album, and yeah, this is some fucking good stuff. After the hype had died down and uh, you know, three or four years had passed after this record came out, and, you know, I didn't even realize that this was such a, just, not even tongue-in-cheek, but just unabashed tribute to the band Demolik, who are currently touring the United States, and I am sadly missed them last, I don't know, two weeks ago or something, with Blood Incantation. God damn it, I wish I would have gone to that show, um, but I had other stuff going on. But yeah, this stuff is really interesting, so take it, take Demolik as a leaping-off point for this band, I think... I don't even think Phil Tugas would, uh, you know, deny that this is an unabashed tribute to that band style-wise. But there's a there's a great big story going on in here, and I haven't read through the whole thing. Of course, I don't have that kind of time. But it is a little bit more, uh, I think, well thought out and developed, and it has its own personality beyond being a tribute band to Demolik. Uh So check that out. It's got a lot of interesting sort of atmospheres and swirling abyssal sort of uh, 
maelstroms of chaos going on here and there to make it a really interesting death metal listen. That's it. That's all I've got. Four albums again. Um, I don't know. Should I crank it up to five albums and make it at least a little bit longer? I don't know. Uh, does it really matter in the end? I don't know. But thanks for joining me. I hope you watch my next video and the one after that. But also, if you ever get bored and you miss me and you need a new video, I've uploaded something like 250 videos on YouTube at this point. So I'm sure there's one or seven that you've missed. So go back, find one that you missed, and enjoy it. Because I'm always going to be there for you. Never going to let you down. We'll see you next time. Have a good day.